Hello, hello, it's Electra Snow and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry for scaring anybody who's scared of clowns, but please click like before you leave the video or come along for the ride. First thing I'm doing to a freshly toned and moisturised face is using liquid latex and cotton balls. I'm applying the liquid latex where I want the lips to be and I'm mapping out a kind of wide evil grin. I'm then ripping up the cotton balls and pushing them into the liquid latex. When you're working with cotton wool and liquid latex it can get quite messy and the cotton wool is much more easy to work with and to shape when it's completely saturated with the latex. I built up about three layers of cotton wool and liquid latex to make a nice full defined lip. You could use scar wax to mould and shape out the lips of the mouth, but I wanted this to stay on for a little bit longer so I went in with the method of liquid latex and cotton wool. You could probably get this looking a lot smoother with scar wax, but I wanted this clown to look as if she was melting and as if this makeup had been on for a while. And once you've built up a few layers of liquid latex and cotton wool, it gets a nice rough rugged texture to it. So that helps with the idea that the makeup's been on for a while and it's aged quite a bit. The other good thing about using the liquid latex method is it will keep it stuck to the face a lot more securely so there's less risk of the prosthetic falling off while you're talking or drinking because obviously your mouth is probably the most mobile part of your face and you move it around a lot. Now I've got the bottom lip how I want it, I'm going in and mapping out the top lip. I'm starting at the corners of my nose and then I'm connecting that line up to the areas we just made earlier. I'm making sure that I kind of dip this line down to create an evil grin from the midpoint of the line and then flicking it out as it gets to the ends. Kind of like if I'd have a curly moustache there. This just elongates the smile even further, kind of making you look like the Cheshire Cat and bringing your grin all the way up to your ears. It doesn't matter if you get a bit messy with the liquid latex and you go over some of your lines. While it's still damp, just go in and push it back into the prosthetic. This is a point where you can start to mould and shape your prosthetic even more while it's still damp. You can just go in and add some finer details and make sure that everything's going in the direction that you want it to. To make sure that there isn't any seam lines forming in the outer portions of the lips and the smile, I'm just going in with some cotton wool and pushing it into any gaps or lines that could be forming there. I decided that I wanted to mask my nose into this to make it look even more creepy and distort the look of my face. So for this I started to apply some liquid latex over my nose and began to pack thicker layers of cotton wool into it. This way I could build up the areas of liquid latex and cotton wool and get it over my nose masking the area so that you couldn't see the high points of my face. Dealing with these thicker pieces of cotton wool can be a bit tricky, you just need a little bit more patience and get them saturated as quick as possible and they'll be much easier to work with. The most important part here is just making sure that you get that lip area thicker so that you can mask the nose into your face and completely cover it and basically erase it from your face completely. You want to hide it in that lip prosthetic and this will distort people's perception of your face because they won't know where your nose is. I packed in the larger pieces of cotton wool at both sides of my nose and then I focused on making the centre of my nose into a cupid's bow by bringing it down into a triangular shape. Despite the fact that we are just covering our face in cotton wool and drawing on a weird creepy smile, you still want to mimic the shape of natural lips. And applying the cupid's bow just in this high area just helps again with erasing your real nose from your face. At this point you just want to keep building up layers till you get to the right depth and thickness so that everything masks in, you can't see your real nose properly underneath of it and everything looks seamless. This whole part of the makeup does take a bit of time and patience with sculpting this whole prosthetic, but it's all worth it in the end when you've got that creepy grin on your face. So just keep going in, building up layers on those lips, and keep sculpting them until you're happy with the way that they look.
Once you've got everything pretty much where you want it, you need to wait for the latex to dry. You can speed up the drying time with a hairdryer, and you'll know that when the latex is pretty much dry because it will begin to develop a yellowish tinge of it. It won't be no longer white. Once everything is completely dry, just go in and powder over the top of that latex so it is no longer tacky. And then just give it a light push to the skin to make sure that everything is adhered correctly. Now that the lips are done, it's time to start filling in some colour. And I'm just going in with a red cream face paint on a foundation brush and I'm applying that on the inside proportions of the mouth. Depending on what colour you want to make the lips, you want to try and avoid putting this over the lips themselves. If you was going to do them red, you just go in and paint everything that one colour, but I'm going in with a different colour later on. So try and avoid getting it on the prosthetic as much as possible, but it doesn't matter too much if you get some over on it, because you're going to be covering them with a different colour later. Once that red colour is down, I'm then going in with some black cream face paint, and I'm applying it on the outer portions of the mouth to give it more depth. This will begin to make it look a little bit more three dimensional. As you can see, I said try and avoid getting it on the prosthetic, but I'm a messy bitch and I got it all over it anyway. Now it's time for the fun part, teeth. For this I'm using some Fimeo Air Dry white modelling clay and I'm just pulling off little round balls of it, applying a little bit of liquid latex to the face where I want the tooth to go and then pushing the clay into it. After a few seconds the liquid latex will hold the tooth on the face so you can go in and start shaping and moulding it. To shape the tooth I'm going in with a clay sculpt modelling tool, it's kind of like a, a metal shaped flat sided tool. You can use a butter knife or anything with a flat surface for this and I'm just going on the sides and the bottom of the tooth and sculpting out the natural shape of what a tooth would look like. Once you've got a few teeth in place just apply a thin layer of liquid latex on the top of the tooth to conjoin it to the lip. This is just make sure that everything stays in place and there's no risk of anything falling off. You can apply as many teeth as you want and sculpt them into any shapes as well. Clay will be quite malleable for a few minutes, so you can go in and add as much detail as you like as well. But once the clay has been given some time to dry, it will be rock hard and mimic the feel and look of real teeth. Continue to keep adding teeth into the mouth until you're happy with it, and once you've got a brand new set of gnashes, it's onto the skin. For this I'm using a panstick foundation, this is Max Factor Panstick as always, and I'm applying that all over the face and then I'm blending it in with my fingers. I'm using my fingers and not a brush here, just in case there is any liquid latex that's still damp or wet on the face. If the liquid latex gets into the brushes, it will completely likely ruin them, so you don't want to use any expensive brushes anywhere near any liquid latex. I'm then going in with a darker foundation and I'm drawing in some like contoured smile lines. You want these lines to look as if the cheeks have been lifted up and that you're grinning. I'm also taking some of that darker foundation around my temples just to make my forehead a little bit smaller, more rounder and look a little bit more feminine. Once I've blended out all of those contour lines, I'm then going in with the translucent powder and I'm puffing that all over the face to make sure everything stays in place. Now obviously no clown would be complete without having a red nose. So I decided to give her a nose job and create one for her. Again I'm just forming this nose out of the liquid latex and cotton balls exactly the same way we did earlier when we was making the mouth. I put two small balls of cotton wool next to each other, got them saturated with the liquid latex and then moulded them into kind of a round shape. I then pushed two small little nostril holes in the bottom of this shape, give her like a kind of obnoxious little pig nose. I wanted her nose to have a little bit of character to it instead of just being a plain just big red round clown's nose. Once the rhinoplasty is complete, I'm just going around and cleaning up any liquid latex which has got onto the skin. The tutorial kind of jumps a little bit out of sequence here because my battery died, but now I'm going in and I'm filling in the lip colour with OCC Lip Tar in Anime, and I'm also using a little bit of Queen in the mix as well. To fill in the red nose colour, I'm using a liquid lipstick by Barry M called Loud Mouth, and it's in the colour Tease. And to darken the inside colour of the nostrils on the nose, I'm just using some of that same black cream face paint that we used on the mouth. As you can see, I've completed one eye off camera because I didn't really know what direction that I wanted to take the eyes in, but I'm pleased with the way that they came out in the end. I drew a blue circle all the way around my eye, up past my brow bone, and the shade I'm using is by MAC and it's called Electric Eel. I'm then going in to apply eyelash glue over the top of the entire blue circle because I'm going to be pushing in electric blue glitter on top of it. There is of course other ways to apply glitter to your eyes and you can use whatever works best for you, but I like using eyelash glue just because it's easy with the clean up. When you come to taking the makeup off, the glitter just peels away and it doesn't go everywhere. Because we know how much glitter can be a pain in the ass. 
I'm now going in with Clown White and I'm drawing a white line underneath of the eyes to make my eyes look bigger. Underneath of that white line I'm going in with some black liquid liner and I'm basically doing a winged liner under the eye. Drawing a full line under the eyes if you would be doing it on your top eyelid and then winging it out as it gets to the end. For the brows I'm using a dark matte brown eyeshadow by Inglot and I'm making them really high on the forehead, really quite defined and arched. Underneath the eyebrows again I'm going in with Clown White and I'm just filling in that blank space with this white colour. This will kind of be like her eyebrow highlight. Worrying about blending isn't at all necessary here but I'm making sure that the eyebrows are perfect. When I'm done with the eyes, I go in to draw about five or six different wings here, and matching them up can pretty much be impossible. But you just want to make them look as if they're mimicking eyelashes, really exaggerated eyelashes at that, not drawn onto the skin. I'm taking some of that clown white again, and I'm using it on my lower lash lines, kind of like to act as a mascara, just to make sure that all my lower lashes are pure white and clumped together. I'm using some black mascara on my top lashes to blend them in to the false lashes that we drew onto the skin. And then the final step, I'm just going in with some black eyeshadow and I'm placing that around the teeth and the corners of the mouth to make it look a little bit more deeper and three dimensional. And I'm applying a red gloss to my real lips which are hidden away on the inside of the mouth to make it look as if the inside of her mouth is wet. And now the monster is alive. The bow tie that I'm wearing will of course be available in my Etsy store, which will be in the description below, along with all of my other social media links, so come and follow me along over there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and until next time, bye bye! Hello, one second. Oh god, I can hardly speak. I've got a uh, prosthetic on my throat. Don't do this to me because I've got a picture of someone who's going to fall off.